Okay, so this is not a complicated math problem. However, a lot of you won't be able to answer this correctly, primarily because of two reasons. Okay, the first is a very common misunderstanding in mathematics. Now, I'm not, not going to kind of highlight that right now because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to figure this uh, problem out all on your own. And the second reason why people uh, won't get this problem right is because they don't understand this notation in mathematics, this little exclamation mark. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem to you. It is negative 2 cubed minus, now this 3 with the exclamation mark, uh, you know, just to kind of, uh, you know, uh, make a little joke here, is not saying 3 really loud. It's not negative 2 cubed minus 3, you know, screaming at, plus parentheses negative 2 parentheses squared. That's not what this stands for. Of course, you know, uh, if you've never seen this before in math, that's what intuitively a lot of you would think. Like, hey, this, you know, this YouTube math man wants me to say three really loud. No, uh, this thing right here is called factorial, okay? And it's a very important part of mathematics. And some of you may not be familiar with factorial. This is very easy to understand. It's very, very important again. And if you continue to learn math like algebra and beyond, you're going to run into factorial, and it's something you need to know about. All right, so even if you don't know about factorial, maybe kind of do these part, do what you can, okay? Especially this part of the problem and this part of the problem, and see how well you do. I'll explain this, and of course, I'll show you the right answer to this in just one second and walk through, uh, you know, every kind of detail of this problem. And by the time you finish this video, you'll be a little bit smarter in math indeed. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one other uh, detail about this problem, uh, hopefully it is obvious, please do not use your calculators. Now, even if you did have a calculator, like a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator, you need to know how to find this uh, function, uh, the factorial function, which is a little, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, secret in and of itself, okay? For those of you that are not familiar, with a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator, there is a ton of buttons and functions on there. It's like you need to take a class just on using your calculators these days because really they are like supercomputers uh, in and of themselves. But I'm going to explain everything, but let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, answer right now. So the answer to this problem is negative 10. All right, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is very, very good. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of uh, powers, okay, especially negative powers and factorial and the order of operations, okay? So when we talk about basic math, and I mean, notice here, I don't have any variables. I'm not doing any trigonometry or any calculus. We're just working with numbers. But um, you know, I think sometimes people uh, don't appreciate the skills involved just to kind of do arithmetic problems or number operation problems, all right? You really do need to focus and take things one step at a time. And let's go ahead and get into this right now. And the first thing we need to consider is that we do have uh, various operations going on here, okay? So therefore, we're gonna have to quickly review the order of operations. So I have subtraction, I have addition, I have powers going on here, and then I have this factorial function, okay? So how does this all kind of come together? Well, the first thing we need to do is to uh, understand the order of operations. So in mathematics, these things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, etc., and other type of functions like absolute value functions or factorial functions. Uh, these are th uh, things that we have to understand the correct order. Okay, We have to do this problem in its proper order. If not, we're going to end up with all different sorts of values, and there's only one correct order. Okay, And the correct order of operations uh, can be defined by this little acronym right here, PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. And effectively, this is a checklist that goes from left to right. And there's a lovely saying, by the way, 
that uh, you can remember this, and that is, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, people have been saying this for years and decades. I'm pretty sure my grandparents were saying this way back in the good old days. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. All right, let's go ahead and quickly review the order of operations. Now, for some of you out there that watch um, uh, you know, more of my videos or other uh, videos on order of operations, you've seen me explain PEMDAS. So one, uh, thank you for watching my videos, but uh, you know, I kind of have to do this in all my videos because some of you are new viewers. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. So P stands for parentheses. So we're gonna do whatever is inside parentheses or these type of brackets or these type of squiggly brackets. Effectively, P stands for grouping symbols, okay? How we can group numbers together. Now in this particular problem, we don't have any parentheses to do. We have parentheses, but there's nothing to do. It's not like seven, uh, times 8 minus 10. Okay, so here uh, we have parentheses. We would do uh, this first. Okay, and one other thing about this uh, P uh, part, the parentheses, is if you have multiple sets of parentheses, you always go from the inside, uh, the innermost parentheses, and kind of work outwards. All right, so that is the uh, P part of PEMDAS. Now the E here is exponents. Okay, yeah, basically you could think of it as powers. So if I have two to the third power, okay, uh, this two is called, the two down here is called the base. This little three is called the exponent, okay? The entire thing is a power. So the little number in the top right, like this two and that three is the exponent. So E stands for exponents, but effectively you're going to be thinking in terms of powers. All right, so M, D, and A, and S, M stands, uh, M stands for multiplication, D is division, a is addition and S is subtraction. So uh, this is another huge area of uh, confusion for the order of operations. Most students think, oh, I have to do all multiplication uh, no matter what first and then division and then it's not the way it works, okay? M and D is multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have multiplication, then division, you're gonna go from left to right this way. But if you have division, then multiplication, you gotta do the division first, okay? This is a very commonly confused part of the, uh, the order of operations. And A and S is the same thing, addition and subtraction works the same way, addition, then subtraction, or subtraction, then addition, whatever you see from left to right. Okay, so that is the order of operations. Now, a lot of you are saying, okay, I'm gonna to go to uh, parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside the parentheses here, right? So what are we gonna do next? There's nothing uh, to do next there. We're gonna move on to E or powers. And of course, we have two power situations. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. And here is my first question to you. Now, I had uh, indicated that if you didn't know what factorial was, you're like, yeah, I don't know what this means. I said, still try this problem, still see if you can do this part of the problem uh, because these are our exponents, okay? So we're gonna handle these two situations and this is our first opportunity uh, for some of you out there to make a very common error. Now, if you make that error, I'm glad that you made, gonna make that error with me so we can correct uh, this confusion. But this is a very commonly confused part of mathematics, okay? So negative two cubed, and negative two squared. What is the answers to these? Do you have your answers ready? Well, let's go ahead and take a, take a look at the answers, and uh, we're gonna look at that, uh, look at the solutions right now. Okay, so negative two cubed is negative eight, all right? Now, some of you might be saying, well, okay, uh, yeah, I got negative eight, but there's, uh, you, some of you may have uh, did this or, th or think, or may have, uh, <laughs> be thinking about this the wrong way. Okay, and I'm gonna show you here, uh, most of you, almost all of you should have gotten negative eight, but a lot of you are thinking in the wrong terms. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about in just one second. Negative two squared, hopefully all of you got a positive four. All right, let's go ahead and uh, see what I'm talking about here. Negative two cubed, okay, means, find, is, it means take the opposite of two cubed. Okay, now two cubed is two times two times two, which of course is eight. So the opposite of eight is a negative eight. Now, uh, some of you might be thinking, well, what I did was go negative two times negative two times negative two, right? So you're like, oh, negative times a negative is positive times a negative. This is going to be a negative eight, okay? Well, you got lucky, okay? Because, let me show you here, 
if I had, okay, uh, negative 2 squared, all right, negative 2 squared, the answer here is negative 4, all right? It's not negative 2 times negative 2. This is a huge, um, you know, common mistake in areas of powers and exponents, all right? I've seen this over and over again, you know, through the decades. And um, if you don't believe me, just put this into your scientific calculator and you'll see that indeed I am correct. Okay, now here, this expression, negative 2 squared, where the exponent is acting upon uh, this uh, negative 2 in parentheses, this negative 2 is the base. See right here, 2, positive 2 is the base. But we got lucky if you made that error because you still should have got negative 8. But here, this means take negative 2 and multiply it by itself. Uh, you know, that's what it means to square a number. So negative times negative is a positive. Okay, so this is the first area of confusion. But again, a lot of you uh, could have just kind of lucked out and still got this right answer. All right, now I'm going to now uh, talk about this mystery part of the problem. And uh, that is, well, let's just go ahead and uh, clean up our work here. So negative 2 cubed and negative 2 squ uh, squared. This is negative 8. This is 4. So let's go ahead and write this before I take the next step. So here's where we're at. We got negative 8 minus 3 factorial plus 4. Okay. Now I did indicate, um, you know, to you what this problem is or what this function is or what this means in math. But some of you, again, if I didn't say anything, you would be like, hey, what is this? What does this mean? I have no idea. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, factorial is typically taught, you know, in algebra when you study uh, probability and statistics and things along the, uh, those lines. It's not that difficult, and it's something that you will learn and you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to explain exactly what factorial is in just one second, uh, and I'm going to explain that after you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. This helps me tremendously. Okay, my objective is to try to reach as many people as I possibly can uh, you know, it's so many people struggle in mathematics, and it doesn't have to be that way. So by you subscribing to my channel, it does help that YouTube algorithm kind of push out and, you know, help me find people that are struggling in math or just enjoy learning from mathematics. So uh, if you are a current subscriber, thank you so much. If you are not, just, you know, shut me up by just saying, okay, I'll subscribe, hit that bell button, and now back to the uh, problem. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I kind of always have to throw in that. Uh, extra little commercial to get people to subscribe. You know, it's that old saying, you know, um, don't be afraid to ask for something in life, right, that you want. Okay, if you want something, you know, have the, uh, you know, confidence to be like, you know, I want to do this or I want to do that. You'll never find out unless you ask. Okay, so back to the problem here. We have negative 8 minus 3 factorial plus 4. So what is 3 factorial? Well, the best way to explain uh, factorial, and this is how you would uh, write it out here, here's the word factorial, this little exclamation mark, is to kind of see it in action. Okay, so 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so we're going to start with the number, okay, 3, and then we're going to decrease by 1. Okay, and we're going to make one big multiplication product, uh, one big multiplication problem, one big product here. So we're going to start with 3, and then we're going to just drop down by 1. So that's going to be 2. We'll drop down by 1. And now we can't go any further. So it's 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So 3 factorial is 6. Now let's just kind of um, look at a couple more examples here. If I said find 5 factorial, how would we do that? Well, we would start with 5. And then we're just going to multiply all these numbers, but we're going to drop down by 1. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We go all the way to 1, and then we just do all this multiplication. And here, in this case, 5 factorial is 120. Now, factorial problems, these numbers, you know, get very large very quick. So you're going to need a calculator, something like a scientific calculator or a, a graphing calculator. And for those of you that are in a little bit more advanced math, you need to know where to locate the factorial button. And it will, of course, depend on what calculator uh, you use. I like uh, using TI uh, products like TI-83, TI-84, calculators like that. Now, what happens if we come across a situation where we have zero factorial? You need to know this, okay? Zero factorial is just one, 
Okay, so if you can remember that zero factorial is one, and you kind of remember the pattern of factorial, now you are a professional expert in factorial. Okay, there's nothing more you need to know. Of course, this is, um, you know, the application of factorial uh, really gets into a lot of uh, math that you will learn, especially in probability and statistics, uh, combinations, permutations, things along those lines, what we call counting theory. All right, so back to the problem. Now that we understand what factorial is, so we have minus 8 uh, minus 3 factorial. We know that now is 6 plus 4. So now this is just a simple basic arithmetic problem involving positive and negative numbers. So we'll go from left to right, but in this case, really, we could change this subtraction problem into an addition problem, and that's what I'm going to do here. So we're just adding three numbers. So let's go ahead and just take a, uh, two pairs or just uh, two numbers at a time. So negative 8 plus negative 6 is negative 14, and negative 14 plus this positive 4 gives us negative 10. Okay, so uh, if there was any part of this problem that you didn't understand, whether it be factorials or, you know, uh, working with um, powers and exponents, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, it cleared up some confusion. But here's the deal. You're not going to really improve in math. You can understand, uh, you know, what I'm doing. You're like, oh, yes, I understand what you just did. But, uh, you know, watching me, you know, do math is not the same for thing um, as you getting better in math. Let's suppose you wanted to get better at basketball. Would you just turn on the TV and watch college or professional basketball all day? Is that going to help you get better? No, it's not, right? You actually have to go uh, practice. Now, how much should you practice? Well, let's take that basketball analogy again. Let's suppose you uh, shoot one basket and you get it in and you're, you know, done, right? Would that, does this mean that you're going to make the basket every single time? No, you want to challenge yourself. You want to go further away here. You want to do all different sorts of variations. See, basketball or sports is a skill. Math is a skill, okay? And you can improve in mathematics, all right? You're, all of you out there are capable. It's just a matter of, you know, getting great instruction and practicing. And that's what I'm here for. So this type of problem, if you uh, want more help in basic math, you know, uh, things like the order of operations, positive and negative numbers. I have a great little uh, math kind of boot camp course, if you will, for those of you that want to kind of, uh, you know, uh, strengthen your foundations. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to that in the description below. If you are actually studying, you know, math at uh, kind of permutate or sorry, the factorial level, this would be like in my Algebra 2 course or more advanced mathematics, okay? So uh, again, it's not that complicated, but that's typically where it's taught. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.